Hi all, welcome to my talk, Getting in the Zone, ButterFS on SMR, HDDs and NVMe CNS SSDs. Uh, my name is Johannes Thompson and I work as a Linux kernel developer for Western Digital Research. And with me is Damien Lemoyle, who is my team lead and also kernel developer at Western Digital. Hi everybody. Um, as a short outline for today's talk, I'll start with a high-level overview of ButterFS and then a bit of on zone block devices. And they'll, then I'll talk about using ButterFS on top of zone block devices. And last but not least, some further enhancements we have in the pipeline. So first of all, what is ButterFS? ButterFS is a general purpose copy and write file system for Linux. It's based around the concept of copy and write B trees, which allows it to easily have things like snapshots and sub volumes. It also has some advanced features like transparent data compression with LZO, Zlib, and C standard. Checksums for both data and metadata using CSC32, XX hash, SHA256, and the Black 2B algorithms. It also offers built in RAID support with the RAID levels RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 10. Technically, there's also RAID 5 and 6, but that's broken. So it's discouraged for use. And it has its own backup utility uh, with ButterFS send receive, which can send a stream of changes between two sub volume snapshots. Uh, then what are zone block devices? Zone block devices are most commonly found today in the form of SMR hard, uh, hard drives. That's shingled magnetic recording. And the zone block device interface is defined by the SCSI CVC and ATA CAC standards. On the zone block device, the LBA range exposed by the device is divided up into zones. And these zones can either be conventional zones, which accept random writes. Basically, a conventional, zones, conventional zone means it behaves like your hard drive your used to, and then there are sequential write required zones, which have a write pointer, and you always have to write at the write pointer. Then once the data has been written, the write pointer advances, and the next data has been has to be written uh, at the write pointer again. To write data before the write pointer, you have to reset the complete zone, erase all the data to rewind the write pointer to the beginning of the zone and start writing again. Uh, that's a constraint that users of zone block devices must be aware of. Um, and that sequential write rule cannot be broken because the device will simply fail the write. To simplify this operation a little bit, um, when NVMe CNS SSDs were standardized, the concept of the zone append operation came around. A zone append is basically a nameless write. That means you write your data to a specific zone and the device places it at the write pointer and tells you afterwards where the write pointer has been. Um, that Unfortunately, uh, the zone append operation is not defined in SCSI and ATA, so we had to write an emulation for the SCSI driver, uh, which came in kernel 5.8. And just recently for the device mapper stack, Damien wrote a similar emulation. Uh, so we can have a unified driver stack uh, in all of Linux. And using the zone append writes uh, means basically you can just do writes in any order uh, with some minor constraints and the device will never fail these writes. 
uh, but you have to be able to handle out of order completions. So um, what had to be done for ButterFS to support, support zone block devices? Um, one thing was the super block in ButterFS is what uh, the ButterFS super block is the only fixed location data structure that did not get updated via copy and write. So that data structure had to be changed. Uh, to a lock structured manner. So we use two zones as sort of a ring buffer and always write uh, the newest super block at the end, at the right pointer. Uh, once both zones are full, we restart from the first zone. So we are always crash consistent and have the new super block uh, at the device right pointer. Next, we had to align the block groups to the actual zones. Uh, and uh, write a zone extent allocator that doesn't append only allocation and to avoid random writes within a zone. Then with starting with kernel 5.12, uh, we are fully functional now which means we use zone append for all data writes. Um, we are able to mount the file system. Um, what's not yet working uh, is we don't have any support for RAID or FLKate yet, but there are plans to do this. And there is no support for the no cow mount option because that simply won't work with the uh, with, with some devices. Currently, we are in a stabilization phase. Um, there is automatic reclaim of dirty zones that was merged in with kernel 5.13. And we are working on bug fixes for all the corner cases we, we found in testing. Next, here is a overview of the data write path of ButterFS. Um, as you can see, there's lots of parallelism. There's normal writes, there can be compressed writes, then there's delayed allocation. Um, all this has introduced a lot of asynchronicity, and there's a lot of potential for, uh, for reordering. For, uh, unintentional reordering, which would then fail all, all rights to the device. That's why we had to use zone append for the data IO submission. So the new allocator only needs to reserve blocks. And it doesn't really care where a block gets written on disk. It just needs to reserve it in the more or less right spot in the correct zone and the device will handle most of the magic on itself uh, once the bio submission process got completed uh, the file system gets notified from the the block layer and the underlying SCSI or NVMe layer and we know where the device has written the data so we can update our metadata which in ButterFS always gets written after the data got written. So there's no problem with the, with the metadata. The metadata um, needs to be, uh, metadata writes needed to be synchronized though. So there's a so metadata lock, which means that we can only have one process writing metadata at a time. Uh, currently, that maybe could be changed in the future. So now to something practical, like uh, about using ButterFS on some devices. So first of all, why should you use ButterFS on a zone device? Or what? why should you use a zone device anyways? 
uh, you uh, there's an increase of capacity with SMR HDDs, uh, or there's you have better predictable latencies because there's no background level, background device level garbage collection in NVMe CNS SSDs. And there's also a better isolation of workloads in a sold device. Um, with the ability to use ButterFS natively on SMR drives, uh, there's also no need to use the uh, device mapper DM zone target, which uh, was used as a translation layer to serialize uh, writes, which means there's a lower overhead all in all. And there is the chance to natively use uh, upcoming CNS drives, uh, which is currently under development in ButterFS. Um, the prerequisites for using ButterFS on some devices uh, is kernel version 5.12. Uh, Fedora 34 currently ships uh, 5.13 as an update as of this week. ButterFS Prox 5.12, that's also good in Fedora, which ships 5.13. And then the BLK ID from the Util Linux package has been patched to detect the new log structured super blocks. These patches are upstream in the main branch, but there is no official release tagged um, with a version containing these patches, but these patches are relatively easy to backport to a local RPM. So for for really using better if it's on a zone block device, uh, you could check if your device really is zoned and look at the zone properties. We have a block zone utility, block zone report def SDA for if it's def SDA. But that's a totally optional step, could be left uh, aside. Next thing is to format the file system uh, with ButterFS. Currently, you have to use the dash M single dash D single uh, options to make FS to, because only the single profile is supported. Uh, and upstream didn't like it to be the default profile. Uh, on a zone device because defaults are hard to change in the future. So you have to explicitly specify the single profile for data and metadata. And then MakeFS ButterFS will perform zone reset on all device zones and write your initial file system data. Uh, afterwards, mount you normally mount the file system, but uh, currently you have to use the dash T ButterFS option for detecting the file system until the latest lib BLK ID code has reached all distributions and the mount utility is compiled against the BLK ID uh, to automatically detect the, uh, the file system. And there's some upcoming improvements, uh, which we are working on. First of all is uh, NVMe CNS support. Uh, NVMe CNS uh, means the, uh, our NVMe CNS SSDs are zoned namespace NVMe SSDs that give you uh, more predictable command latencies due to no device level garbage collection in the background. Uh, you gain a better isolation of workloads because there's no uh, FTL uh, flash translation layer in the firmware that uh, decides to do things while you are writing. And these SSDs offer a similar zoned device interface to SMR HDDs, but with some changes. For example, you have no conventional zones, 
meaning you always have to write sequentially to all zones in the device. And not LVAs are actually, or may actually be usable. Uh, a CNS SSD may have a capacity of a zone smaller than the actual zone size. This means there are changes needed in the, uh, in the extent allocator of the file system, which track the number of active and open zones uh, to not strangle the device limits. And then we have to differentiate between the zone size and the zone capacity uh, to not allocate over uh, devices or a zone's capacity. Um, and finally, my personal pet project, um, the cluster parity rate, something I promise for over a year now to start working on, but haven't had the time yet. Um, on the clustered parity rate, the all data you write in the stripe gets uh, uniformly spread across the devices uh, in the rate volume which helps decreasing the rebuild stress in large arrays and with zone devices typically being relatively big in the tenths of terabyte region uh, the stress on one device uh, stress for rebuild on the single devices when you have to rebuild an array is uh, pretty big uh, then we also have the chance of adding new encoding schemes like uh, Reed Solomon code or MDS codes, which increase the overall fault tolerance for multi disk failures. Um, and all this requires introducing a new B tree in ButterFS because, hey, there's only 13 of them. So let's add a new one. Where um, that one, that change will allow us to do so append writing on the zone file system. So we don't have any implicit calculations anymore, but have real metadata on disk where our data lies. Uh, that also benefits known zone uh, butterfs RAID setups like the traditional RAID five and six. Uh, which are discouraged because they suffer from the RAID write hole and uh, data loss can occur with these RAID levels on ButterFS. So with the introduction of the Stripe tree and the declustered parity rate, this problem can also be fixed. Yeah, this concludes my presentation. Yes, we have still have some time left. Are there any questions? Uh, there's the question, if we see any performance problems with ButterFS, do you mean uh, ButterFS overall or uh, zone ButterFS versus non-zone ButterFS? Um, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Johannes, go to the Q&A tab. Uh, yeah, see, see the Q&A tab, okay. Um, to answer Neil, why aren't we running Fedora? Because corporate laptop, corporate IT. Um, and uh, I am running Fedora. It's on my right, right here. It's uh, it's hidden uh, from the camera, but it's patching and building and doing lots of things. Um, I'm actually running Fedora on some test systems and OpenSUSE and some other systems, so. Uh, and to the to answer the question, how bad RAID five uh, and six is, and when it will be good, um, well, I wouldn't use RAID five six code in production. Uh, surely people can run it with a UPS and won't ha ever have any problem. Other people will suffer problems, but. There are some architectural errors in the code, which we simply don't want to fix, but just 
switch to the new scheme with the rate uh, stripe tree, which adds the new layer, uh, new translation layer between logical addresses and uh, device physical addresses in the file system. And uh, journal that to be failure safe. Yes, or not really journal, but have a uh, audit right. Uh, when will the RAID stripe tree get added to Butterfest? As soon as I have time for it. Uh, hopefully, it will be this year. I promise it for several years now. But I hope to start the end of the month with the actual coding. Uh, the next question is, any improvement on Butterfest encryption? I have heard rumors about it. I don't know if how public these rumors actually are, but there's people working on it. Will we add stuff for ButterFS with some block devices to Anaconda? Uh, okay, uh, so I don't know it's the installer, right? Um, yeah. I'd say Which... it should work out of the box if it's not a boot drive. If it's a boot drive, we also will batch grub so that grub can find the super block. If it's not a boot drive, uh, we'll have to check the the Anaconda code if it's using the correct default block group profiles for data and metadata, but that should be all needed to change. If not completely mistaken. Yeah, well, once we have Libya Libya in place, I don't see any difficulty in doing that. Yeah. And eventually, even, yeah, we can even patch Grub to be able to boot from uh, ZNS SSD, running better FS. Or even an SMR drive if you want really to boot from an SDD. <laughs> Uh, I think it doesn't encrypt boot because Grub doesn't support decryption, most likely. I've never looked into it, but that would be my guess. The question is, uh, do I still not encrypt for volume while to install? It's not encrypt slash boot, don't know why. Again, my answer is probably because, oh, Debian do does that, okay. Well, I don't know, I've never looked into that. We, we are mostly working on kernel stuff, so this distro, we, we are kind of, uh, well, not Johannes, but it's me, I am a beginner on distro work. Well, I haven't done a lot of distro work either. So I I did work at, the, at a distribution, but never done any distro work, only kernel work, so yeah. Okay, so for information, uh, uh, LUX format is not yet supported on SMR and ZNS. Uh, so uh, Neil answer is be that's because Debian uses LUX1 and Fora uses LUX2 and Grab just got LUX2 LUX support. So related to zone storage, LUX format is not supported uh, on zone storage, even though you can run DMcrypt on uh, SMR or ZNS drive but not with the LUX format. And the reason is that crypt setup, the, the utility, doesn't write the super block sequentially. Well, the, the information for, for the LUX format doesn't write sequentially. So that, of course, creates a problem if you don't have a conventional zones, zone at the beginning of your drive. You simply can't format. So I was working on fixing that, but got derailed and we, I haven't finished. But that's something that can easily be fixed. DMCrypt does support um, zone, zone devices since uh, kernel 5.9. So that's uh, the question is, 
uh, about performance after four to five years of usage versus Butterfest versus XFS and EXT4 that Butterfest uh, feels slower. Uh, yes, indeed, better, Butterfest uh, is slower than XFS at least. For architecture reasons, we do copy and writes, yada yada, and there's uh, the bookend extents are slow. There's there's some problems we can address. There's some problems we can't address. For performance of ButterFS on a zone device versus on a non zone device, uh, with all the performance testing we have done, we are relatively on par. There is things that aren't completely on par uh, on a sound device versus a non sound device, but it's relatively on par. I would also add that after four or five years of, of running an STD, I would recommend to change the XP. Then there's, uh, will Butterfest get support for layered rates? Uh, what do you mean by layered rate? Like, oh, uh, like a red zero on top of red one or the, the reverse? Yeah, like, like what rate 10 basically is? Or, uh, no, actually, the most common I've seen is. Um, uh, rate zero of multiple rate five volumes, something like that. Is that what you're asking, Neil? No answer from Neil. Uh, well, to uh, while we are redesigning uh, some parts of the rate code, we could at least look into it. Um, I'm not sure everyone will be happy with that. Yeah, uh, I'm personally not a big fan of layering reds like this because things can break. If you have one bone that dies, the entire thing can die. Uh, so that can, kind of defeats the purpose of, of uh, reds. So it has to be done properly, but then uh, I would say that a, a proper ERG coded volume can achieve the same level of performance and protection that uh, a layer red would with less complexity and probably better performance. Okay, I think we are over time, isn't it? Yes, we are four minutes over time. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks. Uh, bye. Thanks, Johannes. Bye. bye.